I'm more of a Daisy person. I was really upset that I did not see Daisy here in this cast in the Mushroom Kingdom because whenever I play Mario Kart, I always choose Daisy. Every single time. My friends know this. I always choose Daisy. Where's Daisy? Can I please play Daisy in the future? Because I think that would be a lot of fun because I love her. Hey everyone, welcome back to Candid Cinema. I'm Amanda, otherwise known as AMX ND Reviews on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. Today I will be reviewing the Super Mario Brothers movie. Yes, I tried to do it. I am Italian. That accent just makes me laugh every time I hear it. I am just so proud of Illumination for actually bringing in Nintendo and working with Nintendo and vice versa. I think Nintendo made a very, very good decision with this one because Illumination's animation is gorgeous. I think when, you know, Despicable Me came out, you didn't really think of this being a studio that would capitalize on one movie as they did because Despicable Me became a universe in itself. But then they expanded and they did Sing, they did The Secret Life of Pets and, you know, The Grinch and The Lorax. And I think that Illumination has stacked up to do some really wonderful work and say what you will about the stories. In each of those films, they're not the strongest. I think that's where the studio suffers with these projects is the fact that the script is all is not always that great. It's not that strong. Despicable Me is still probably the strongest script that they do have. Kids loved it, families loved it, it was made for both adults and children, and that's where the Super Mario Brothers movie faltered. I didn't think the script was that great. It's way too, like, straightforward, very simple, and it was like they were trying to fill an hour and 30 minutes. I know that I'm starting off with a negative here, but that's the thing with animated features is that, sure, the animation can be absolutely gorgeous. You have these beautiful characters coming to life and the voice acting is great. But then if the script is a bit lackluster, that's where you can kind of lose your audience. But I didn't think it was that bad. I felt like a kid again. I felt like I was playing on my GameCube. I felt like I was playing on my DS. Like I felt like I was completely transported back to when I first started playing any of the Mario games. And I think that's what's so important here. People are saying, but like, it's a kid's movie, it's a, but it's not a kid's movie. It's for the kid and everybody. And that's the hint of nostalgia that plays into the Super Mario Brothers movie. It's not overstuffed, I don't think so. So the way the story goes is that Mario and Luigi, played by Chris Pratt and Charlie Day, who do literally a really damn good job. I'm not gonna lie. I think that people are just hearing Charlie Day because Charlie Day has such a distinct voice that it's hard for him to ever play anything else or try to voice something else, you know? Like he, it was a combination of Luigi and Charlie Day. So I think that's why it worked. They made it their own and it's very personalized. But again, I'm going to say this, especially going into Chris Pratt's voice work. We don't know what Mario sounds like. We've never known what Luigi sounds like. So it doesn't really matter if, you know, we had an idea in our heads because it's not like they had anything to work off of. Sure, you have the catchphrases, which I think they nailed. You know, I think that Charlie Day screaming as Luigi is one of the highlights of this year for me. And then Chris Pratt saying Mamma Mia or Wahoo, like it worked. It really worked for me. And it's the fact that like he tried his... He tried his best with his own vocal register, and then it mixed with those catchphrases, and it worked. However, when I was listening to Mario, I didn't hear Chris Pratt. I'm being completely honest with you. I'm not trying to say that, like, the voice work was phenomenal for Chris Pratt, but you know what? He took a stab at it. And I didn't hear him. I didn't hear him. I heard him maybe like a bit it would come out because the accent, you know, from Brooklyn, you have to have a different accent. But it's hard to make something out of nothing. You're working off of catchphrases. Same thing goes with, you know, Princess Peach being completely, you know, given an entire backstory, which is amazing because we love Peach. I'm more of a Daisy person. I was really upset that I did not see Daisy here in this cast in the Mushroom Kingdom. I'm really upset with that because whenever I play Mario Kart, any game, I always choose Daisy. 
every single time my friends know this i always choose daisy where's daisy can i please play daisy in the future because i think that would be a lot of fun because i love her but i think that anya taylor joy was fine because anya taylor joy had zero to work off of we don't know what peach sounds like other than her saying her own name that's it or mario or to like no like nothing nothing literally nothing to work off of so i just heard anya taylor joy i did not believe that she was peach because it was just anya taylor joy's voice so i'm just like cool now anya taylor joy is officially peach in my head when i hear her voice and that's fine that's totally fine but you can't get mad at chris pratt or you can't get mad at you know at charlie day for literally trying to build these voices and these characters for themselves and integrating a little piece of them into the voice work because there's nothing to go off of. You can't get mad at them for that. The same thing with Toad. Keegan Michael Key, like, you could hear him, but that's fine because he made Toad hilarious. Why? We have nothing to go off of. It's just gibberish in the games. Like, that's fine. Donkey Kong, Seth Rogen, my boy, I was dying of laughter because, again, Seth Rogen's another person who has a very distinct voice. And when I heard Seth Rogen's laugh and I saw Donkey Kong, I was like, Donkey Kong would have this laugh. And it was just so funny to me that they integrated them perfectly. The voice acting is really fun. And then the last person that I had to, I had to kind of save him for last if we're talking about the character work here, freaking Jack Black is a national treasure, all right? What he did with Bowser is absolutely god tier. But guess what, guys? No matter how good Jack Black is, the reason why Jack Black is so damn good is because he puts his entire self into the characters that he voices. So sure, you're looking at Bowser, but you can hear Jack, but it's a weird mixture of everything that we're seeing and that we're hearing and that we've heard of who Bowser could be. This was an experiment to let these actors make these characters into something else and something more to create that longevity on the big screen. And I think that they did a great job with what they had to work with. I really do think that. So I, I think Jack Black stole the show. I love Seth Rogen and I love Charlie Day. My only peeve is that they didn't use Luigi as much and I would have loved to see a bit more of him just because Charlie is like God tier casting for Luigi. I love it. You have Luigi and Mario together, okay, at the beginning of this and they are trying to be plumbers. But there is a story here. There is a family story here. Mario thinks that he can never please his family he can never please his parents he thinks he's such a like he messes up constantly okay but he keeps pushing you don't know when to quit that's the running thing through the super mario brothers movie that's saying something to young kids but that's also saying something to adults because when you're playing these video games we're playing them we've played them you don't quit you keep going sure sometimes you rage quit sometimes but what we learned from like Super Mario Galaxy and Super Mario Odyssey and like Mario Kart, especially with those freaking blue shells, you keep coming back, you keep pushing, you keep playing. And that's something that is there. This messaging is there for young kids. And adults look back and they're like, yeah, like, you know, Mario's trying to build his own business. Maybe you're trying to build your own business and you keep pushing, even though you keep failing and you get back up again. Like that is something that everyone can relate to. So there is a message there. I'm not saying it's the best story, but it's, you know, they did what they could and you get to learn from Mario and Luigi, right? So they, you know, they make a whole commercial. They really lay on the thick Italian accent in the commercial, which is great. But I like the fact that they changed that. I think it was really important to kind of use regular voices and not like continuously go with the shtick because it would get old real fast in an hour and 30 Okay, you have to look at it that way too. Like if you can't carry the shtick the whole time, it can get annoying. And that's why those little phrases that we hear in the video games aren't repeatedly being said on top of that. So I think that the way that they placed like the Mamma Mia's or the Wahoo or something like that, it was a bit overkill towards the end, but they did put them in at the right time. What happens with Mario is that 
he gets sucked into the sewer because he's like, I have to save Brooklyn. There's water everywhere, blah, blah, blah. So he gets sucked into the sewer and he's transported with Luigi to another universe, another galaxy. So Super Mario Galaxy is being integrated into this. So obviously Luigi goes to the tube to Bowser's castle and Mario gets to go to Mushroom Kingdom. So you had that divide. My only issue is that there wasn't enough time with Luigi and the way that they cut back and forth wasn't really evenly balanced to show that Bowser was like with Luigi, that he captured Luigi, that, you know, Bowser was heading to Mushroom Kingdom to destroy it. Like all of that was there, but the editing for this just wasn't the greatest because it wasn't flipping back and forth, showing Bowser getting closer. It was a bit all over the place in that case, but you had sections of games that were really presented in this movie. And I think that that is what made me sit there in awe because the land, the way they animated Mushroom Kingdom, the way that they did like little obstacle courses for Mario, and then they even did like side crawls with the obstacles. And you have like Mario and Luigi going through different courses while you're like watching it on the big screen. And I thought that that was amazing i thought that was extremely well done the power-ups being integrated fantastic work there they built the world accordingly and they took from every single game they took characters from every single game they took obstacle courses from every single game and then once they went to go get their carts i was in heaven i thought that was such a nice touch rainbow road was a nice touch it's just so detailed to mario world it is just so detailed for nintendo that's the takeaway here get the messaging with family you have two brothers that love each other so much and they're gonna fight for each other and with each other and defend each other you have little surprises throughout which i was just like oh they did that that's so cute you have music cues and the score coming in it is just a mario love fest and that's okay it's a Mario love fest. I walked out of there beaming, okay? I was just like, that was so fun. That was delightful. And everything that they integrated, the, the concept of actually pulling from every single game, just amazing work. I thought the animation, again, was just absolutely stunning. But of course, the script isn't the greatest. It's not the strongest story. That's fine. Would I have wanted a little bit more Luigi? Yeah. But I had fun. It was adorable. This is for a new generation again to love these characters, to kind of link themselves to Nintendo, to want to play Mario Kart again, or, you know, to play Mario Golf or Mario Tennis or Double Dash or like whatever's out. Luigi's Mansion, like it is just so awesome that we get to do this again and a new generation will fall in love with these characters again. And I really hope that this does well at the box office this weekend because it deserves a sequel. There are two post credit scenes. I had a lot of fun with it and I gave it a three and a half out of five. It is just delightful. The humor doesn't always work. There's some great moments, there's some little jokes. So if you guys enjoyed the Super Mario Brothers movie, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what your favorite Mario game is, okay? And let me know who your favorite Mario character is because mine is Daisy. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. You can always follow me over at AMXND Reviews on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. And if you guys want to help out the channel and make this community amazing and continue to grow, there are ways to help support the channel down below. I'll catch you guys next time. Next time, keep watching movies.